For this trip, we went to the Wind River Range. We drove to the southeast end of the range, got our tandem bicycle out of the car, and rode dirt roads and paved roads to the northwest part of the range. We left the bike at Green River Lakes Campground and then hiked southeast through the mountain range back to the car. Well, there's Ricky Bobby. We're in a animal shelter. We came across because these storms are crazy. Okay, ready to go? We made it to Boulder. I think we're about 45 miles for the day is all it is. But we're both cooked, yeah rough for who knows what kind of reasons and the sun just came out but it was raining as we pulled in here you can see we're going to check in get it right tomorrow this will add tomorrow distance tomorrow but i think it's better to get ourselves straight now all right this is the scene outside we're fortunately we're in a hotel overnight it's in the morning hopefully the rain will stop by the time we need to roll Okay, we're better this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll see how, right. Checking out a boulder. Boulder, right? Good weather. Supposed to be a couple hours, and then rain again. So, got to get rolling. What happened, Joker Spanny? You got a flat. Dang. <laughs> this is a sandwich that we made two days ago, and. Uh, chunk of a cheese quesadilla with vegetables in it that I put on top in the bag and it's melded into one meal. So this is our view today, right now. There's a rain cloud over there. Hopefully we miss that. Okay, this time we're ready for Suited it. Suited up and ready today, unlike yesterday. Somehow, we got through this day without getting rained on. Some light sprinkles, storms all around us, thunder, and some wet roads, but we dodged it. And here we are, we ate dinner, cleaned up, brushed our teeth, got in the tent, and it started raining. Getting us registered for the trail. Ricky's right behind here.
Here we go. You ready? Yeah. No helmets, no bike shorts. Just starting off. Walking across a mudslide here. A radius. Can't remember the name of these, but this uh, woman told us little red berries on ground cover kind of plant, and they're they're tasty. This is a pelvis. I don't know who it belonged to, but there's the ilia, there's the ischia, there's the hip joint, there's the pubis. It actually feels kind of good after a while. Oh yeah, that's like achy cold, isn't it? Hailstorm number one. <laughs> Not too bad a hailstorm, huh? A little bit of hail. Yay, here we go, day two. How many switchbacks? 15, 12, or 16, 13. Yeah, 16 total. The first three were, were separate. Heading up to get through Cube Rock Pass. And the lions roar, the lions roar, as me evaded. We don't know what you call this, a scree field or a talus field or a little of both. So there's where we came up from and we're turning as we get uh, to the toward the top. And this is Cube Rock Pass. Coming up on Peak Lake here. Which is just amazing. I don't know, over here, 10,000 something feet. 
Says we gotta get across that talus slide over there. Looks impossible, but there is a faint path. I guess we can settle for this as a campsite tonight. Yeah, darn it. <laughs> darn it. Sometimes I wish I could find my rosemary hill. I sit there and look at the deserted lakes and I sing. And every once in you back to me. Hello. Oh, my God. You're so cute. I'm staying cold this morning. Leaving our campsite. 8.09 in the morning. It doesn't hurt a bit. It's only in your head. Right there, and that's a, a lot of picking to get through there, isn't it? It doesn't hurt a bit, it's only in your head. It doesn't hurt a bit, it's only in your head. Knapsack coal was beyond our skill set, I think. I don't put these on. We were supposed to go down this snow slope, but you're running the risk of a pretty serious slide. And this is where we're heading. Gonna go out that drainage down there. But we're picking our way through this rocky edge, which is more complicated than anticipated but at least there's hope anyway for a more rational route than a slide. Sandy's in here somewhere.
So there's Knapsack Pass still, the cornus up there. And we picked our way down. Now we're gonna, this is Twins Glacier. We're gonna just stay across the foot of it. Down to about there and then it's a right turn. Here we are setting up at the head of Tikum Basin. It's a beautiful campsite. day four, uh, 11 o'clock departure. We're up the head of the Titcomb Basin and we're gonna try to get on trail today. So we're hiking around Island Lake and literally a beach out in the wilderness. Stopped and got set up and we got a little hail. Now there's clearly a storm rolling in. And here's our uh, campsite for after day four. Near Little Seneca Lake, there's a lake there, but it's not, it's adjacent to the lake, but it's super small. Start right out of the site, 9.30 on the trail. Behind me is uh, Mount Lester, where I had a picture of the storm last night. And uh, somewhere up here is Lester Pass. Starting right up that this morning, first thing. Lester Pass, elevation 11,560 feet. We just met Vermer and Sherrod. They were hiking up to uh, Lester Pass from the opposite direction and they got a camp set up. He's had an injured back and fused vertebrae and so they got packed in with horses, set up camp, and they're gonna be hiking for five days, day hikes from their base camp. But neat couple from Durango. Pole Creek, I guess. We're gonna wade across here. This is Mount Baldy here. We're going through this pass right here around it. And that'll take us another five miles. Back above the tree line. Not the snow again. Fun sledding hell except for the ending. Yeah, right. 
Here's our daily rain or hail or right arm storm. Hoping it's short lived. Okay, here we are on day six and uh, got up. We've been on the trail for an hour and a half or so. And first thing on the agenda is getting over Hat Pass. And here it is. Doesn't look too bad, but it's always steep when you get up there. shoulder strap attachment broke so it's been hanging loose it's hanging on the load lifter anyway that broke halfway through the first day this is the uh, top end of the tibia the bottom end of the femur in other words the knee joint of the last hiker that went through no it probably got loose a... site on the end of day six right next to Hall's Butte which is there right next to us and we're uh, overlooking this lake and we have a low cloud coming through and some pretty good winds And that was an absolutely fantastic campsite uh, just in a pass between Hall's Butte and another small mountain and we were kind of up on the side of the butte. Would you like to start a river? How's this? A good snack break? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Juicy, dry, dry mangoes. Mangoes. Bike gloves are good to keep your hands from chapping if you're using hiking poles. Great for wiping snot off your nose. And if you happen to be wearing plastic aligners, you can set them down. You don't have to set those in the dirt. 
And this here is peanut butter, Nutella, oil, a lot of sunflower seeds, chia seeds. Key ingredient is crushed up pretzels to give you the salty with the sweet. Slivered almonds in there. It's basically a bunch of fat that tastes great. So we're just doing some ciphering. We figured out this one jar of goop is about 2,500 calories. So anatomy instruction with Sandy. <laughs> Alongside of the trail, we have a rib, a mandible, the other side of the mandible, and a scapula. Have to lobby hard and make it up. Utes that we saw, they're knolls going through training out here. They're way down there in front of us. Five pounds in each on each horse, seventy per side. Okay. Do that swimming one again. <gasps> Swing the arms. <laughs> All right, here we go, descending out of the alpine meadows uh, into the forest, which is beautiful, but it means we're dropping down out of the mountains to the trailhead and the trip is gonna be over. You can still use the potty trowel in the backyard, <laughs> but don't let the neighbors see. Look where we are. Yeah. 